today how are you doing i hope you're doing so very well in this new year compliments of the new year i am so happy to be you know connected in this new year this is my first 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 uh, video that we are doing for the year and this year we're just going to talk about my entrepreneurship journey and i'm going to be giving you my best entrepreneurship um advice or tips for startups so if you have a pen please be ready because this topic will help you in your business it will help help you also to grow so much and before we continue please like subscribe and do follow my youtube channel so you get to learn and grow as a person as a businesswoman as a businessman and in everything that you do and i just want to take this time to thank you for the support that i continuously receive let's get right into my entrepreneur journey so my entrepreneur journey started when i was about i think six seven year old and i used to remember by then i used to help sell my mom um help my mom to sell fat cakes so i used to just go to the market and i will sell fat cakes and i will usually do it after school and i will just help my mom so that she can be able to you know freshen up and cook and you know be able to be ready you know for supper so i started learning the business tips from when i was about seven eight years old and i continued to do it like that until when mom passed on i still continue that tradition with grandma i will help her you know with selling the fat cakes i will go with her to the farm when she was having a farm i will help her just to sell count the change and be able to just be there and see how is she doing this business thing and then when i went to um senior primary school i still continued and that's when i started to learn how to do braids so i started to plate this uh, same uh, braids i started to do them and i will just get random friends from school and i will plate them when i went to high school i still continued the same art of plating and i will charge my friends a fee and that used to help me a lot with you know some pocket money when i went to varsity even while i was you know studying medicine to become a medical doctor I will still you know do the braids and I will charge and that was what was helping me with my pocket money so the entrepreneurship journey started a long way back not even before um, not even when I started the medical practices what it was way way before that and you know like i remember those days when you know you will go and sell you have to put that big bucket of you know the fat cakes uh, or the big container of fat cakes and you go to the streets and you needed to learn how to sell because if you don't sell and you come back home mom will be angry with you because i mean you didn't sell anything and then the next day you need some pocket money you need some you know some bread and there's nothing because you didn't really sell much so you needed to learn how to sell so you when you go back you present something your parents become so very happy so i started to learn the art of selling from that age when i was young because i needed to convince people how to buy into the products that i was selling so when i graduated i started working you know my normal job as a medical doctor but you know after my community service i just saw that you know uh, something was just missing and i just say i need to just be pushed out of this comfort zone and then i took the 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 the, the big leap and i went to a bank and i borrowed money it was almost about eighty thousand ninety thousand and i'm like i need it for something personal they just checked my record and they saw i'm still employed they st saw that um money was still coming in so they gave me the money and then i took that money i bought furniture i bought computers i bought chairs i bought everything that i needed to run my medical practice and then that whole month i, I survived on the money that was left the next month and the coming four months my business went drastically down because people didn't know who dr nambi is and so nobody was buying into my products and for that three months it was a uh, three to four months it was the most hectic time in my life because we didn't have enough money we were living on cabbage and pub every day i remember 
my 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 children were still young we had to take them out of crash and just leave them to be you know at home because we could not even afford to pay for um the the, the, the crash and the schooling the rest of the things we just had to cut you know family gathering and things like that we had to cut because we didn't have that money to be able to even attend even a family coming to visit us it was tough because there was nothing for them to eat and so it was very very tough but i i remember you know while i was going through that phase a lot of you know emotions came into me and i asked myself did i make the worst mistake of my life by becoming an entrepreneur and by doing this business thing and so many times i was tempted and i said you know what i'm going back and i'm going back to you know my government job you know that security that i was having and just when i was about to give up i remember i just you know i i i i, I had a friend and i had been talking to my friend and my friend kept telling me you know of how much you know money she was having and she was like you know i'm having you know almost about three hundred thousand in my account i don't know what to do with the money and i'm like if only she knew <laughs> how much i need this money and i literally did tell her and she's also a doctor by profession and i and i told her about it and she also said no um that time when i uh, before i told her what had happened in those um, months when I was struggling the one thing she picked up in and she just told me Betty the money that you never work for you use so fast that you never know where the money goes but the money that you work so hard for you will be able to make that money go a long way she said look at the hundred rand note hundred rand bill you know, because that money, you sweat very hard the whole day. You didn't see any customer. And then one customer came. Do you think you're just going to go and take that money and buy some fast food and, you know, some, you know, something that you'll just eat and then finish? I'm like, no. And it's like, yes, you're going to look on to something that will last you longer. So you're going to look in buying a bag of pop. You're going to look into buying the cabbage because you know the cabbage can take you two, three days. But that fast food will not take you long. The chips won't take you long. And the, that you know, fried chicken, the balls, it won't take you long. So you're going to look into something that will take you longer. And that really made sense. And I said, okay, fine, I'm not going to ask him. But later onwards, I think two years, three years down the line, when my business picked up, I told him, I'm like, you know, I was planning. <laughs> I was planning to borrow money from you. But when you told me that statement, I just had to humble myself and just keep quiet and say, okay, fine, I'm going to leave it. But it did happen. So you will have, you know, a time in your business life where your business, you know, will really test you. It will test you and you will start to ask yourself, really, what am I here? You know, did I make a mistake in coming this in this business, in starting in this uh, entrepreneurship journey? And while you ask yourself those questions, there will be people that will tell you, you see, we told her it's not going to work. <laughs> they will tell you, just quit and join us and just be like us. There will be those people that will just give you that, you know, like it's not for you. Just leave it. That, that, that business is for other people. So this is why it's very important that I thought as we're starting the new year, let me just come in and give you encouragement and give you tips on how I made it in my entrepreneurship journey, how, you know, I've been able to maintain and sustain my startup irregardless of the economic crisis that we are facing, the challenges that we are facing, how am I still able to stand despite all this that is happening for, for um, in my life or in my business life. So firstly, I will give you the tips that, you know, that usually I take as the best tips that I got that have sustained me. So number one tip, I got it from Dr. Emsley. So Dr. Emsley is one of my very close friends and I call him my mentor. He's a private GP, he's a medical doctor. And 
when I was in my low moment, the first six months when I started my business, and I remember I was at that point whereby I say, I'm just gonna humble myself and go ask somebody who's been in this business to just give me a hint on what do I need to do in order to succeed, in order to make it. And I went to him and I was crying and I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore. I just feel like I just need to give up and it's too much. And I was crying and then he just came in and he's like, you know what, Dr. Nambi, first of all, you know, I've, I, when I see you, I see like my child. And I just want to tell you, you know what, whatever you are going through, when I started my business 30 years ago, I was at your age, I was at your level. And someone told me, no matter what you are going through in your business, don't give up. Don't quit, no matter what. He said, you know, if you need to come and learn, come and learn in my practice. Send your husband, send whoever you need to send so that they can come and learn, you know, business one-on-one -on, -one on how we do business. And my husband went, he started learning on how do we do claims, how do, do we do what, what procedures and things like that. How do you put it on a medical aid? How do you claim and things like that? How do we submit remittances and things like that? My husband started to learn. Me on the other side, doctor says, you know what? Since we are doing surgical cases, why don't you join us? and also help us with the surgical cases. That's when I started to do, you know, surgical cases. I just started to be, you know, fully into the business because I knew I had to, you know, I couldn't let him down for this opportunity that he gave me. So I had to work extra hard to just say thank you for the opportunity that he gave me. And because of that, I also learned that, you know, I need to also be out there and also teach other people about, you know, business and how it works. So a lot of doctors that when they started their businesses, especially in Bella Bella, they did come to me and ask me, how is it that you started your medical practice? And I took the same steps and I have, you know, equipped them. Um, unselfishly, I have given all the things that I've known, that I've learned, and I gave it to them so that they to learn the art of doing business in medicine. So I said, what is the point of being selfish when somebody was selfless to save my business and just give me that you know chance to succeed so i can't be selfish and hold the information to myself so i started now to give all this mentorship um advices and how to other startup businesses doctors that were starting out and also i started mentorship now mentoring kids that wanted to do business and things like that you know school kids and all that so it has helped me um, at the beginning with that advice i use it also to advise others not to give up irregardless of how business you know how business is and then the other um advice that i got is um they they, they 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 told me it's not about how much money you make because you know when you're starting a business you know the overall mindset that you are having is that you just want to go in business to make money you've seen oh dr nambi um, says maybe she makes this amount per year and then you're gonna also do it because you are like ah i've seen dr nambi drives this car and i'm gonna also join this so that one day i can drive this car but it's not an easy road so so it's not about money in the beginning money comes later as a bonus for the work that you are doing so it's about the seeds that you are putting out there the seeds that you are sowing in the people that invest in your business that is the most important thing when you are starting your business to remember what seeds are you sowing and that seeds that you are sowing is what will help you I remember I don't know if I spoke in one of my YouTube videos I did say you know when I started the business I did all promotions that I could do but no business of mine was working out and when I started to give my hundred percent in you know what I was doing in my business the customers in my business which are the patients I was seeing went and they told their friends they told their families they told 
everybody in their communities and they say go to dr nambi because dr nambi just take her time dr nambi is so passionate about what she does dr nambi is, 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 is full of compassion dr nambi is able to treat you very well because of you know the treatment plan that we go through with dr nambi we are still alive we still made it and that is able to um, help you to recover in what condition that you are having. So they refer a lot of patients to me. So when the patients come already, you know, um, some of them, just when they enter, you know, they already feel, you know, like when they come, they are sick. But when they go out, there's already a change in the environment. You can see that person who came depressed, sad, is working out with a set, um, a, another different set of mentality. Because I say, when you step into our business i want you to feel a change in your mind in your body in your mental status so that when you go out you are a totally different person that's what i wanted to achieve as i want to make that change that you know i don't want to just look at your medical aspect i want to look at other aspects of your life that could be contributing to that problem i want to look at you know your home environment i want to look at your marriage environment i want to look at all these things that might be contributing to that stress that depression that problem that you are having and that helped me because now i have you know like i even learned a lot through this process, I learned the counseling part. I learned how to, you know, just put myself in people's shoes and be, you know, be there for them when they are going through all these challenges. So those are the best advice I can give you that I got as an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur to say that, you know, um, don't quit no matter how hard it is. Number two is to say that, you know, it's not about the money that you are making. It's about the difference. It's about, you know, the seeds that you are sowing in your customers, in the people that are buying into that product. What seeds are you sowing? And that is what will help you in order to stand out, in order to keep, you know, that business going for a long time. So now I'm just going to close off. To close off, I'm just going to give you tips one-on-one -on -one tips on what you can do in your life if you want to you know have a successful startup business have a successful journey as an entrepreneurship so number one you have to be willing to be very hard working that's something that i do you know like i can take long at work hard working you know um every day of my you know almost every day of you know, the week I work extra hard. So you need to be willing to, you know, outwork yourself because nobody will wake you up in the morning and say, it's time to go to work. You need to wake yourself up every day and dress yourself up, irregardless whether there's money in your bank account, no money in your bank account, you still need to dress up and go to work. You still need to show up. That's something I've learned because as an entrepreneur, your whole face is the business. If you are not there, unfortunately, nobody will buy into that business. Number two is to have patience for what you're doing. Um, I've seen there's many times you'll get tired of, you know, let's say that business that you are doing. But because of the passion that you have to seeing patients, the passion that you have for making, designing dresses, designing houses, designing computers, and, you know, designing whatever that you that you do you know that is what will help you in the days when the business is not making money for you the patient will keep you and will sustain you the other third reason is you need to have a patient for what you are doing sorry it's a purpose for what you are doing purpose has to be there what purpose are you having because like i said earlier on it's not only about the money what purpose do you have in your business what do you aim to achieve is it just to give prescriptions and that's it you are finished or is it just to actually make a change make a difference in so many ways that you know the the lives of your customers becomes transformed and that's what i've told myself the purpose that i'm there for that purpose is to change my customers irregardless where they see me in office out of office i need to make my purpose so that i can be able to serve them no matter what so that is number three so number one hard working number two patient number two you need to have um purpose number four 
Number four reason or tip for, for entrepreneurship is you have to be willing to go on a low budget. Unfortunately, I don't know if nobody has told you, entrepreneurship journey is tough. It's very hard. So if you're not willing to go on a low budget and you just want to take all that money and splash it, at the end of the day, there's nothing. You will be in business, but after five years, you are out of business because your spending habits are not okay. So be willing to live on a low budget no matter what. The other advice I can give you, number five, is to be able to invest. Be able to save. It's so important. If I can mention COVID again has taught us in so many ways, invest and save. That is number five. Number six is be able, same as number five, be able to save at least if possible between three to six months of your salary so that in those early days when you are starting and you don't have enough that money can be able to sustain you so be able to save a please i beg you save at least three to six months i know i took a leap of faith when i just went in without saving but it co almost costed my life my house my cars my everything and that's why I'm giving that, that advice. Be able to save up at least for six months. When you do that, you will be able to see that you'll go far. Number seven is have mentorship. I already mentioned I was mentored by a doctor friend of mine. And that is what has helped me, you know, to say I will not quit no matter what. So be able to look for people that will be able to mentor you in the journey of entrepreneurship. Number Eight, be able to have a strong support system, be it family, be it friends, be it colleagues, be able to have somebody that you can be able to call at any time. When you feel like you want to crash, you want to give up, you can just call them and they will be able to be there for you and carry you throughout that, you know, that struggle, that, you know, that problem that you are having. Number Nine is you need to be able to solve problem. Entrepreneurship is about, you know, solving problem. Before you even go into starting that business, what problem are you able to solve? What solution are you able to give to society? If you're able to solve a problem, then you are well, you know, you, 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 you can well, you know, make that business and that business can work. For me personally, when I started my business, the problem that I saw in my town is most doctors are male doctors and there was no female doctors by that time in 2015 when I started so I looked at it as a business opportunity because I say there are more when I did my research I saw there are more women who consult to doctors than than males so because there's more females who are sick than males there's more females seeking medical advice than males let me start and capitalize on this problem to solve women problem and that is where i started to build my business solving women problem and then from there I expanded and looking at other services that I can be able to serve, that I can be able, you know, to reach out and, you know, make a difference. So you need to look at what problem is it that you have in that sound that you can, you, you know, you can be able to solve. And that is your business. Number 10 tip on your entrepreneurship journey for your startup journey is not to forget the importance of believing in you believing in yourself because if you don't believe in you how do you expect dr nambi to believe in you how do you expect your parents to believe in you how do you expect your customers to buy into that product so it starts with you you need to believe in yourself so that you can be able to sell us that that you want to sell that business those ideas so that it can become a life believe in yourself if you don't believe in yourself people will come and say stories about yourself about you about your business and you'll just be like okay i'm going to quit and that's not how entrepreneurship or business startup is people will say negative things 
negative reviews about your business, but you still need to believe in that business, irregardless of how many people around you believe it or don't believe in what you do. You believe in yourself. You tell yourself, I'm here to make a difference. I'm not here to blend in. I'm just here to, you know, to, 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 to make a change, to make a difference, to make sure that when people come in here, they never go out the same. And that belief is what will drive your business, even when you have your lows, even when you have your highs. So it's very important every day when you wake up, when you go to bed, you need to believe in you because you are what will sell that business. I hope you have been inspired. Please like, share, comment on what is the best tip that will help you in 2021 in your entrepreneurship journey. Thank you so much, Dr. Nambi, coming in with your weekly you know, advice, your weekly tips, the first for the year on your entrepreneurship journey. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.